Yeah, so in this video I want to kind of go over this, which is the Hope uh, Pro 2 Evo Hub. It's pretty much the same uh, process for all their front hubs really. But yeah, we're just going to change the bearings. Um, so first things first, you have these two end caps on here. Luckily on this one, they just kind of pull off. Um, they can be a little bit problematic on some of the hubs that I've seen. There are some ways of removing it. Probably the easiest way is to get something like this, which is a bearing puller. And as you tighten this part, the end basically expands outwards. So it splays out like that. And you can just slot that end to there. It's a 15 mil uh, bearing puller. And you would just basically do that, tighten that, and then you can wiggle that off. If you don't have anything like that, then another way is just to get some sort of tool that's essentially almost the same size as the inner hole. And what we're going to do is we're just going to slot it inside probably about that much. So probably about 10 mil or so, just to slot that in. And you just want to wiggle that then. And at the same time, I'm just pushing with my thumb to try and lever it a little bit. And you should find that by doing that, you can over time walk it and be able to kind of pull it out that way just from the wiggling motion. So yeah, get those caps off. Um, the reason you don't want to put this in too far is because there is a metal tube in the center and it won't let you kind of wiggle it as maybe as much as you need to do. But yeah, that's that. And then you have your bearings. So you have one bearing here, one bearing here, both the same sizes. And inside there, there is actually a metal tube as well. Um, and what you want to do with that metal tube, if somebody's installed the bearings correctly last time, you should be able to push against that metal tube. You can just hear that clicking in there as we push it around. And we show you there. You can see there's a little lip now. That's the metal tube. And if we push it that way, The lip's gone, and it's gone basically to the opposite side. And the reason you want that is because you need space to put something down there to punch the bearings out. So I've got this uh, hub tool, which is probably going to be quite noisy on the camera because we're going to have to hit it with a hammer. But it just means that you can rest the hub on there, and this nylon area shouldn't damage uh, the aluminium hub. So what we're going to do is bring that over as far as we can in one direction. And then look down there, so we have to hit it on this side. And we've got a tool like this, a punch. This one's a four mil punch. And we've got a relatively big hammer. I think it's called a two pound hammer. And I just find you do kind of want quite a heavy hammer when you do this kind of stuff, otherwise it'll just bounce off. Um, so we're gonna slot that down there. And ultimately what it's gonna do is kind of hit on that lip. So it's not gonna come out any further. So there you go, it's sitting behind the bearing. And because these bearings are pretty badly worn, it doesn't matter if you damage them. So don't worry about that, because we're not going to reuse them. And once you've done it a little bit like that, what you want to do is basically work on opposites. So we've hit it this side, so now we're going to expose the opposite side. So I'm gonna bring that tube over we can hit it on this side it's kind of quite difficult it doesn't give you a huge amount of room and just check from time to time make sure it's kind of moving yeah so what you can should be able to hear now is that tube inside's a little bit looser because what we've done is we've moved the bearing outwards so it's not pressing against the tube anymore and that makes your job a little bit easier because you've got a bit more space uh, to move it around. And you won't have to kind of push it, you can just use the lever in here to move that out of the way, it makes it a bit quicker. And there we go, let's come out with the tube, which has a little rubber seal, or well, does not seal, it just means it stops it rattling around in the hub. It's a bit of a sound deadening thing, I believe. Um, and there is one of the bearings there. So it's one of the originals. So what happens is Enduro, I believe, make Hope bearings and then Hope get their little kind of name printed on the seal. But this one's quite grainy as you turn that bearing. You can feel like vibrations going through your thumb. And it's probably a little bit grainy and it just 
it was about time to repair it before it got any worse. So when we do the other side of the hub, it's a lot easier because there's no tube inside anymore. And just make sure you're happy with it. Just work on the opposites like you did before. You don't want to push or punch one side out because the bearing probably gets stuck in there. A lot now, and it's going to drop out. You can feel it moving. There we go. And that's ultimately both your bearings removed. This one's a bit smoother, so the disc side seemed to have survived a bit better. But yeah, what we're going to do now is replace them. But I'm going to tell you what size the bearings are in order for you to go out and buy whatever ones you want to buy. Yeah, so this bit I just really wanted to show you how simple the hub is. So it's essentially this shell that goes here, and that's what it's going to look like on the inside. It's just two bearings and a tube. There's nothing complicated about it, and ultimately that's just a, a hole where your axle is going to go through. Um, so that's it, yeah. In terms of the bearings, um, if you did want to buy your own bearings and you didn't want to search for Hope Hub bearings, because they probably sell you a set of Hope Hub bearings, um, they might be quite expensive, but the size is... So the internal diameter, so in here is 20 mil. Externally, the outer edge, so that's a 32 mil diameter. And the width of the bearing is seven mil. So if you look up 20, 32, seven bearing, um, you have a lot of options. What you do want is the ones that have the seal on them. You don't really want to have an open bearing where you can see the ball bearings because obviously your wheels, you're gonna get wet, or most of your wheel gonna get wet, mud, uh, dust and all that kind of stuff will get into the ball bearings and cause them to essentially die out very very quickly so you definitely want to get ones that have protective seals uh, on the bearings so yeah the other code for them would be uh, 6804 so you can either look for 20 32 7 bearings or you can look for 6804 RS and when you search for one of those terms the other term will probably come up next to it anyway so there you in go in terms of pressing in the bearings there are many ways to do it i actually have a proper press which was quite inexpensive actually i didn't pay a lot for this press and it come with a lot of uh different bearing parts or i don't know what you'd call this drift press not too sure but yeah that will fit perfectly on the bearing like that so that just helps you there you go it's even got the sizes on it there so that's just going to help you pop that in. Some people will use um, like a socket. Like if you had, um, I haven't really got any big ones here, but you have a big version of a socket like this. When you do that, what you don't want to do is have the socket touch the seal. You want the socket to touch the metal part of the bearing because if you start pressing on this seal, the likelihood is that you will damage it. Um, you'll probably kink it and then the grease that's inside Will end up coming out. Um, what I'm going to do on this one is they do run a bit of grease on this because when I took it out there was a little bit there so if I can find a bit of blue grease I'm going to pop that onto there. Not sure why that is maybe it just helps it move inside the hub and there should be a little there we go a little recess for it. So we're just going to pop that in there Oh, and the other thing as well is that some people like to put grease on the outside of the bearing because they say that it stops or helps reduce the bearing from rusting. So you can do something like that as well. I don't believe it's going to help the bearing seat into the hub because when you push that down, there's such a small gap here that it's just going to squeeze the grease out. So I'm not entirely sold on that, but... Yeah, I have to do a bit more research for that. I'm going to drop that in there. And I guess the other thing as well when you're working with bearings is it's probably best to leave them in the packet until you're ready to use them. Just so you don't get dirt and grit and stuff like that on them. Which is exactly what I didn't do. So, yeah. Try and get that nice and straight to start with. This can be a bit tricky because if you do 
press them in too far, that tube in the middle won't move. And if it's not in the right place, you won't get your axle in there. So yeah, you always want that tube um, that sits in the middle to have some sort of movement, some sort of free play. You don't want it rattling in there, but you want to be able to move it with a little bit of force. And like I say, it's a very, very cheap press that you can buy. I found it on eBay. It just makes your life easy. Have a little look, make sure everything's going in nice and straight. You can see that one's gone in pretty much already. This one's got, what? A millimeter or two left until we can't see it anymore and we're just going to keep turning that until there's a lot of resistance I'm gonna just check that tube in the middle otherwise you've got to punch the bearings out if you do it too tightly okay so I could have just rattled that See, we need to go in a little bit further. Not too much though. So it can be a little bit tricky just to get that tube moving enough. You don't want it loose in there, but like I said, you want to be able to move it manually. Just make sure all these are tight so they're not rattling. It's gone silent now. So we'll just check that. We can probably, as you can see, it's just rattling around a little bit. We've probably got like a mill or so. so. If I do another quarter turn on that and come back and check it. There we go, what we're doing there. Okay, so we're happy now. I'm happy anyway. It's not rattling and you have to kind of you've got a bit of movement but you've got to force it. And that's I'm happy with that. It's not gonna rattle around in there. Um, it means that we can get the axle in there. So ultimately that's it. You just gotta put your end caps on. You can put a little bit of grease on there if you wanted to um, and that will just help you remove them in the future because once it's basically bolted into your fork and you've got your quick release lever on there, it's going to compress that anyway, it's going to hold that in place.